Hello, friends. So, <laughs> this is the first time I ever do this kind of thing. So, I'm staring into my smartphone and I'm trying to do a live stream from this uh, basement workshop. And I have no idea if it works. <laughs> so, I'd like to hear from you if there is a sound, if there is an image, and if everything seems to work. Um, I think there's supposed to be some sort of chat window where you can write a message. And if you could write me a message that everything looks and sounds okay, I'd be happy because then we can start the session. <laughs> I can see a few thumbs up on my screen as well, so I don't know if that means that we're, that we're good. Okay. I have my computer set up here as well, down here, so I can just check myself if I have sound here. It seems okay. All right. Hey, Mark. Thanks. All right, so welcome to the first small boat. Small Boat School live session ever in history. <laughs> so um, thanks a lot for, for joining in. I've really been looking forward to this. Um, so over the last about two and a half years, I've been building a fiddlehead canoe. Actually, I've been building two of these boats. So here you have it. That's the first fiddlehead canoe I built. Um, around, I started around two years ago as preparation for starting up this, um, this online boat building school. So I built this boat first, did a little bit of filming in my old workshop, then I um, built another one, which isn't in the workshop right now, which is a, a two-person fitlet canoe, uh, and I did the video material for that, which I've been editing, and I've been creating this um, pretty comprehensive course material over the last, uh, over the last two years. So, um, yeah. And in around probably September, I plan to, uh, to launch the course officially. So you can um, join the small boat school and you can become an apprentice at the small boat, online boat building school, where you can get access to this video material about building the, the fiddlehead canoe. And you'll get access to the apprentice forum as well, where you can get feedback, help and support from me um, during your boat building project. So that's the idea behind, uh, behind Small Boat School. Um, so before we get started, I'd like to just do a very quick tour of my, of my workshop. So I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. So I live in the middle of the city. So building boats here may seem <laughs> kind of odd, which I guess it is but it happens to be where I live, so, so that's where I'm building my boats. The thing about living in a city is that it's pretty hard to find somewhere, you know, a proper workshop space where you can actually, you know, run a thickness plane and run a bandsaw without people getting angry with you. So I found this basement workshop. So I'll just flip around the camera like this. So this is my workshop. Just do a quick spin here. So it's a very long and quite narrow room. So the great thing about this is that boats are also usually quite long and quite narrow. So you have a lot of in-feed and out-feed space for a thickness, oops, a, a thickness planer and for a bandsaw. So the downside to this, of course, is the fact that because we're in a basement, it can be kind of hard to get large things in and out. So that's one of the reasons I've called it small boat school. So one thing is that I really love small boats and I think they're great and I, I think they can do a lot of things that big boats can't do, you know. Um, so they have a lot of advantages, but they're also a lot quicker to build. So a big boat is like thousands of hours, whereas a small boat is maybe only a couple of hundred hours. So I think small boats really have a lot of things going for them, but there's also this practical consideration that I only have this very small workshop. So, um, so the boats need to be small in order for them to be, to be built here. 
Yeah, so as you can see, I'll just flip the camera once more. We have a class going on down here. So that's my friend Anas. So we share this workshop space and we do, um, we do woodworking classes, both of us. So Anas is right now, he's teaching a, a spoon carving class with a group of gentlemen here and they're just about to finish. <laughs> so they've been doing some beautiful carving work here. Looks great. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> so that's one part of the shop So where we do uh, classes and this is the other part of the workshop which is the main boat building workshop which is where I work. So just to do a quick tour of this, I have my machinery here which is a combined jointer and thicknesser with some dust extraction and I have a bandsaw. And the reason they're in the middle of the room is because it, that, that gives me in and out feet. So I can take a long plank and I get it into the machine, I can get it out of the machine as well. So that's why you want it somewhere in the middle of the room. And these machines are all on wheels, which means that if I am cutting something that has a lot of shape to it, a lot of curve to it, I can um, take the machine to the middle of the room and it will allow me to get the material through, um, through the machine anyway. And I have this very long bench. And as a boat builder, you, you want long benches because a lot of the work you'll be doing will be long stuff such as boat planks, for example. So having some, some sort of support for this is great. So, but the main workbench is this one in the middle, which is, I built, built it a few years ago, so it's a very heavy French style workbench and it's quite long as well. So that's what I use the most. And it has this, this leg vise, which is great for work holding. So that's where I do most of the work. Over here, we have the, the metal working shop, so to say. So it's just a very small space. But that's where I do my metal working. So I have a, I have a vise, I have some metal working tools and I have the third machine in the shop, which is the bench grinder. So the bench grinder, which is used for, um, for, for grinding my, um, my edge tools. So these are actually the three machines that I use. Um, I do have a drill press and a chop saw as well, but I don't use them a lot. So the three main machines in my shop is the band saw, the joints and thicknesser, and the bench grinder. And I would say if you were to invest in if you were to invest in three machines to do boat building, I would say it would be those three machines. The rest can, in my opinion, be done using hand tools. All right, yeah. So that's actually it, and this is where I do most of the actual boat building. So I built the fiddlehead canoe right here. The boat we have here in the middle, I'll just flip the camera once more, like that. The boat we have here, which is under construction, that's um, it's called a um, ladybug wheelbarrow boat. And it's a boat that I built for a physical class a few weeks back. This is the boat that we were building during the class. So it's designed by Harry Bryan, just like the fiddlehead canoe over here. But the fun thing about this boat is the fact that it has a wheel right there in the bow. And as you can perhaps see, the oars go through the transom, so it can be wheeled to the water and back again, uh, just like a wheelbarrow, including all the stuff that you want to keep inside it. So it's a really fun boat, and it's just about the simplest boat you can build. So I thought it would be a great uh, project for a class. So the class built one of these boats, and then I tried to build one of these boats as well. I didn't quite finish it, so it's still kind of in process, but we'll be looking a bit more into this today. Yeah. Um, so this boat looks a lot like an Optimus dinghy, but, uh, and it actually has a shape that's very similar to, a, to an Optimus dinghy. The difference between this one and an Optimist is the fact that this is actually a real wooden boat. So the Optimist dinghy was designed to be built out of sheets of plywood, which is great because it's very easily accessible. But this, this boat is built out of real wood and it's a lap strike boat. So um, I think it's, if you have access to real wood and 
some way of thickness playing it, I think it's a more fun build than, um, than a plywood, um, plywood optimist. Yeah, so just to mention a few details about this boat. As you can perhaps see, it has a flat bottom which has quite a bit of rocker. Um, so it has quite a bit of curve in this direction and it has two planks, a lower plank and an upper plank which overlap so it's a, so it's a lap strike boat and these, uh, these planks are riveted together. They're both in the same plane so it's a straight, it's a straight side but it does overlap um, and has these two flat transoms. So it's a quite short boat, it's only a little over two meters or seven feet. Um, but, um, but it's actually, you know, it can carry a lot of stuff, even though it's so, so short, because it's really wide towards the ends. So it's a, it's a great tender, and it's a great boat for, you know, um, if you have a boat on a mooring, just wheeling it down to the water, rowing out to your mooring, and then jumping into your sailboat or whatever boat you have. Yeah, so that's the, um, that's the Ladybug wheelbarrow boat, and actually we'll be looking a little bit more into this boat today. So I asked you guys to post questions if you had anything you were curious about, uh, anything boat building related. And I had a few questions about spiling. So spiling, that's the process of making patterns for planks. And uh, I, I can really understand why that's sort of something that puzzles, puzzles people. Pu it actually has puzzled me quite a bit as well. Because how can you get this shape right? You know, it's bent and it's perhaps also twisted and it has a weird shape and it needs to fit at both ends. So, so how do you do that? The thing is, I can't really demonstrate spiling today because I don't have a boat that's being planked right now. Um, so I'll do something a little bit different, which is, but, it's, but it actually uses some of the same techniques. So we'll be um, making a pattern. Uh, so not a plank pattern, but a pattern for a quarter knee. And the reason we'll be making a pattern for one of these quarter knees is because I had another question, which was about making gunnels, you know, reinforcements along the, the upper edge of the plank and about making a, a breast hook. So a breast hook is if you have a boat with a pointy stem. So that's sort of the knee at the end of the boat. So I've had a question about that as well. So I was just wondering if I could do some sort of combination which uh, demonstrated some of the techniques you use to create a plank, plank pattern or to install a breast hook or a quarter knee. So that's one of the things we'll be looking into today. So I'll just see if I have any comments so far. I'll just go check my computer. And we'll get back. So let's see. So no comments so far. Okay, I'll just move the camera. <clears throat> so I'm really curious how this will work out. So it's very handheld. So I'm the cameraman, I'm the technician, I'm the... <laughs> the instructor and everything, so I hope it will work out, but let me know. I'd be very curious to hear. So let's see if we can get a proper view of this. So this is the stern transom uh, on the... Actually, actually, I think I'll just do a slightly different angle here. This is the stern transom. I'd like a good view of that. The fiddlehead canoe stern transom down here. So I'd like to make a knee for that. And actually perhaps we should just start by looking at the other end because then I can show you what this knee, what this knee is. So earlier today as I was preparing this session, 
I made a knee for the bow end of the boat. So a knee is this part. So what it does is it reinforces and stiffens the boat quite considerably. So it helps the boat from sort of being, being wobbly. So it sort of like it creates a triangle shape which uh, stiffens the boat quite a bit. But obviously you want this part to fit really well before you fasten it with screws or rivets through the transom and through the, the side planking. So you want a good fit for this part. And how do you get that? So that's what we'll, we'll be looking into today. Um, as with almost everything in boat building, there are several ways of doing this. So one way that I really like is to make a pattern. So you create a pattern for your part out of some scraps of wood that you can sort of piece together. And then you use this pattern as the starting point for cutting out the real part, which in this case is a crook of oak. So a crook is a sort of curved, curved piece of wood. You know, we have the grain running in a curve. So you don't need to use a crook for this part, but it's if you have one, it's nice because it'll be a little bit stronger and the grain follows the shape here. So I, was, I had a, a, a crook on hand, so I decided to use it for this part. And we'll use that for making uh, the quarter knee at the other end as well. So I'll just turn around the camera and we'll have a look at the other end here. So it, we, would, we just looked at the, at the bow. And now we'll take a look here at the stern. So this is where I want to create my quarter knee. So I'll be using these scraps of plywood. Um, just a moment. Right. So the, the, the idea behind patterns is that you can make them out of several pieces of wood that you can fit independently. Then you can stick them together somehow using glue or screws or whatever. And then you have a part that sort of describes the shape that you want to fit, um, that you want to fit onto the boat. So in this case, I would want to fit this part so that it fits the, the planking. I want to fit this part so that it fits the transom. And then I want to connect them somehow with a third piece. So one temporary way of doing it would be using these little spring clamps. Like this, sort of as a starting point. So the transom here is easy because it's flat, you know, it doesn't have any curve to it. But the planking here at the side has a little bit of a curve, so it isn't really a tight fit right now. So I don't know if it shows on the camera, but it sort of stands there at the end and there. So I need to just plane off a little bit to get a nice tight fit. So I'll just grab my block plane and do a bit of adjustment here. So I just do this visually. So I have maybe a quarter, a third of, sorry, an eighth of an inch here, three millimeters. So I just remove a little bit here at the ends. And the same at the other end. And I'm starting with a short stroke at the end and then a slightly longer stroke and a slightly longer stroke still and a longer still. And that's how you create a tapered shape, sort of like a curve. So let's see how it fits. Just work with this one. It's getting closer, I guess. Needs a little bit more. The other end. If 
you have any questions, please just please just post them to the chat if you have access to that. I'm not sure if it shows actually the chat functionality. I guess it should, but I'm not sure if it's available. And if it's not, then please <laughs> please just write me an email and I'll try to um, follow up on it uh, after the session. So now I'm just trying to get a good fit against the planking here at the side. This is getting pretty close, maybe just a few more plane strokes here, like this. And I want my knee to be flush with the upper edge, the shear of the boat. So this is pretty much um, an airtight fit. So now I'm happy with this one. And now I want to figure out where this part should go. So what the amount of tilt should be. So I want it to, I don't want it to droop down like this. That would look weird. So I would like it to tilt upwards a little bit because it looks better on a boat, I think. But of course it shouldn't go so far that we get very close to this, um, this corner because I want to chamfer that. Um, so I want to find some sort of good compromise. Um, Let's pick up a pencil <clears throat> and we'll take these little spring clamps and then do a little bit of uh, trial and error. So we put this one in place first and we'll add a spring clamp. Like this. And this next one. Okay. Spring clamp. So, so I want it to be flush here with the shear line, but I want it to have some sort of reasonable angle here as well. So the length of this knee should be eight inches or around 20 centimeters from this point to the end of the knee. So this is actually way too long. So I'll, I'll you know, cut it to size at a laser point. So I'll just grab a, a ruler. So we'll get some sort of idea of where it will end. So if we measure out eight inches here. So that's around here. So this is where the knee will end. And obviously I don't want this to be too high up, but I don't want it to be too far down either. So I think around half an inch down would look good. So this is around where I want it to be. I'll just make a pencil mark here so that I won't forget. And again, these sorts of things, you know, they're, they're up to the builder. This is not, you know, any, it's not in any plan. It's not in the, included in the plans. It's not specified how these uh, quarter knees look or how they, should be, how they should be installed, how they should be shaped. So that's something I'm just sort of figuring out by experience and by eye. Um, so I think this would be reasonable. So it's leaning upwards a little bit, which makes it look nice and strong but it's not too far up either. So this is where I want it to be. Um, but these spring clamps, you know, they're, they're great for just holding things in place temporarily, but they won't hold it in place enough for it not to shift. So now I'm just making a pencil line around here. And then I release these spring clamps and I'll grab my hot melt glue gun, which is right here. And then I'll glue on the cross piece so that it won't move. So I'll take this one first. I'll just align it with a pencil line. It doesn't need to be super accurate. It's just to get it in more or less the correct space, the correct place, sorry. So that's where I want it to be. So this next one needs to be slightly more accurate because I want it to be a good fit. 
against the transom. So I'm holding this one in place and I'm trying to align these with the pencil marks like this. And I'm holding it up to the little mark I made here and I'm trying to get it nice and tight against the transom and against the planking. Okay, and I guess the glue has already cooled down now, so it's, so it's cured. So this is actually the basic shape of the part. And it's super easy to do this because you can take one part and fit it, and you can take the next part and just align it and then glue it together. And then you have a, a pattern that you can use, you know, to trace onto the, um, the wood that you want to use. So that's the first thing. But the other thing is that, you know, just cutting a piece of oak, 90 degrees here and there, of course, you know, that, that won't fit very well. If you look at the knee we made here at the other side, the other end of the boat, you can perhaps see that it's by no means square here. It's really beveled on one side and at the other end as well. So you want to somehow figure out these bevels. Of course, we could just cut it out square and then do a lot of fitting later, you know, as we are trying it on the boat. But it will be much easier to try and pick up these angles first and then cut it out on the bandsaw um, at the approximate angle. So you'll only need to do a little bit of fitting uh, um, later on, on the, on the actual boat. So what I'm doing here is I just picked up this little bevel gauge. So this is a miniature bevel that I've made out of a hacksaw blade that I've snapped into two and then I've put a copper rivet in the middle. And it's really great for boat building because it's so tiny. So that's one thing. The other thing is that it's, um, it's really flat. So in some cases, for example, when you want to pick up angles from drawings, you can put it flat on the workbench, sorry, on the drawing, which makes it a lot easier to pick up angles than if you use a traditional carpenter's bevel like this one, because it has this wooden, wooden base. So we'll be using the small one. So I'm holding it in place again here. I'm aligning it so that it's flush with the, with the shear line of the boat so that it's at the correct angle up here so that it hits my pencil line here. And then I'm just placing the bevel up here and just pushing it up. I don't know if it shows on the, on the, on the camera, but I've just held it this and just pressed it up against the bottom of the of the pattern just to get the approximate angle all right so this angle I'll just transfer to the pattern stuff you know just to keep a record of it so I'm just doing like this so this is the angle I want to cut and I'm just marking here that this is the planking Um, and this is the transom. Just so that I won't mix things up. Okay, so that was one angle, but I'd like to pick up the angle against the transom as well. I'm aligning it again. I'm just doing this by hand. You could use you know, hot melt glue to keep your pattern in place as you do this. That'll work fine as well, but I think this is actually quite doable as well. So I'm just trying to get it in the correct position. There it is. And then I'm just picking up the angle down here. So this is the angle against the transom. And I'll just transfer that to the pattern stock as well so that I have it on hand, like this. So this is the angle. 
Okay, so that was uh, the first step in figuring out the shape for the, for the quarter knee that we'll, we'll install here. So now we'll move on to the, um, we'll move down to the workbench. So I, I think I've made a little bit of a mistake in not opening up the comments. Um, so I'll just do a quick check here on my computer to see if I can allow comments somehow. Just a moment. So you can grab a co cup of coffee or <laughs> go to the bathroom or whatever you, you need to do. Um, let's see. Um, So I'm using this uh, learning management system, but um, it's pretty technical and I'm not all that technical. <laughs> so I'll just need to figure out things. So this, as mentioned, is quite a bit of um, an experiment. So, but it would be great if I could get your comments because, uh, yeah, I think that would be fun to hear, to hear what you're thinking and maybe, you know, something is not working as it should. Um, see. Okay, so here's the page and I'll just see if I can somehow put a little tick um, somewhere, show chat, like that. Okay, saving, like that. Okay, let's see. So I believe if you refresh now, the chat should show up, but perhaps it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then yeah, I don't know. <laughs> then we'll just need to do without it. Um, okay, that's the chat. So we have a, a question from Dave. Hello, Michael, is the bottom of that dinghy a double layer? That's a very good question, Dave. Uh, thanks a lot for asking. So we can just, before we move on with the pattern, we can just have a look at this. So it is indeed double planked. So this uh, ladybug wheelbarrow boat can, the bottom of it is, is flat. Um, I'll just flip around the camera like this. The bottom is flat as mentioned. And you can make the bottom planking in several different ways. So Harry Bryan specifies a few different options. So one option is to use uh, tongue and groove boards all the way, which will work great, I think, but it does require you to have some pretty decent wood. Um, and you need some way of being able to create the tongue and groove. So actually the students who built a boat at the class did the tongue and groove model. But for this boat, I've been doing a laminated bottom where there's an inner layer with thin strips that go athwart ships and then glued onto this layer. So the boat was built upside down. It was turned around. After the planking was done, underneath, I don't know if it shows, there is a layer of longitudinal uh, strips that were glued onto the, the inner layer. So the great thing about this construction method is that you effectively create a huge molded sheet of plywood, which is 100% water resistant and which also doesn't move at all. So, you know, wood moves not very much. Whoops, sorry. <clears throat> wood doesn't really move along the, the direction of the fibers. So, Wood is a bundle of cellulose fibers that runs the direction of the tree trunk, so to say. 
So these long cellulose fibers are very st stable in their length, but in their width, they can shrink and swell quite a bit. So along the length of the wood fibers, you have very little shrinkage and swelling, but the other axis and the, the thickness, the wood will swell and shrink quite a bit. So if you use wood that has the fibers running this way only, it will actually shrink and swell quite a bit, which can open up the, the seams. Okay, um, which may, you know, introduce leaks in the boat. But if you create a plywood panel, so to say, where you have one layer of wood running this way and another layer running the other way, this effectively locks the shrinking and swelling on both layers. So that's sort of the magic of plywood, <laughs> in a sense. So it becomes extremely st stable. It doesn't really um, expand and contract, which um, of course makes it, you know, waterproof in the sense that it doesn't. Uh, there are no seams that'll that'll uh, open up. Um, yeah, uh, but but also you know makes it ex extremely stable. So so actually. This bottom has been glued onto the sides with epoxy glue, whereas the other boat was bedded in a flexible cork because, you know, epoxy glue is extremely stiff or hard, so epoxy glue won't really allow any movement. So for the other boat, we needed to use some sort of flexible uh, corking compound. Yeah. So it's a you know, pretty complex discussion. You know, do you like using epoxy glues and stuff like that? I've been doing a lot of thinking about that. I've also also made some videos about it. And I don't really love using these glues, but in some cases, I think they really do make sense. Like for this boat, all these little strips are made of offcuts from the planking and from other parts of the boat, you know, little strips that couldn't be used for anything else. So it's extremely efficient in terms of uh, using the wood. Also, if you have nuts here and there, or if you have some wood with some splits, you can actually use it here because it'll be cross-laminated. So any weaknesses in the wood will be sort of leveled out. So you do use some epoxy, which is perhaps, you know, not very environmentally friendly and which is perhaps not all that nice to work with, but you, it does allow you to make a very long lasting boat and a very, you know, a boat that's very watertight that won't leak and it allows you to use the wood, you know, all of the wood, uh, you know, even the, some of the smallest scraps that you'd otherwise just uh, throw in the, uh, into the fireplace, you know. So, so, you know, I think it's always, there are some pros and cons of everything. Um, and I think in a, lot, in a lot of ways, these modern glues can allow you to use your materials in a better way and create longer lasting products longer lasting boats because you can build boats that won't leak where water won't seep in and cause rot so you can make you know boats that can last for decades if not centuries so i think that's pretty great so that was a very long answer to dave's uh, question let's see if there are other questions um yeah, Dave has another question regarding which sealant has been used between the strakes. And I'm guessing he means the garbage plank and the shear strake, if there's any sealant in here. There is a little bit of flexible Sikaflex cork at the gains. So the gains are the very ends out here where the Planking sort of tapers. I can just show you just a moment. Show it here. So all the way towards the end, there's sort of a taper. And that part of it has been corked with a flexible bedding compound. And the reason I used the flexible bedding compound here instead of the, the epoxy is because this is a solid plank. It's not cross laminated like the bottom. So it needs to be able to shrink and swell without anything splitting or opening up. So that's why I'm using the flexible, the flexible polyurethane cork here. So, so far I've only been corking the very ends 
here and here. But before the boat is painted, I'll just run a bead of cork all the way. Because if the boat gets really wet, you know, out, if it's outside, you know, for an entire rainy, uh, rainy summer, you know, and it then, you know, st starts baking in the sun and really shrinks up, you don't want this seam to open up. So um, putting a bead of flexible cork into the plank seam is just a very efficient way of um, preventing any leaks, even if the boat shrinks and swells. Okay. Let's get on with the, um, with the quarter knee. So we'll just move to the workbench here. Just a moment. Like this. Okay, this looks reasonable, says the cameraman. <laughs> Okay, so this is the pattern that defines this angle, right? And we have the, the bevel at the edges described here and here. So now I want to figure out which shape this knee should have. So I'm transferring this to another piece of, in this case, some thin plywood. You can use whatever you have around, lying around, uh, MDF or particle board or whatever. So what I'm doing here is I'm tracing this shape with a pencil. And here, like this. Oh, it looks very bright. Let's see if I can turn this down just a little bit. Perhaps I can get you guys a little bit closer if it's difficult to see. Perhaps this is a little bit better. Okay, so that, this is the angle that we want. So I'll just get a ruler here. So I'll just extend this. I'll just extend this line. Because I want my I want my knee to be eight inches from the corner. And why eight inches? So that's just that would be my best guess for what would will look what will look right. So I'll just measure out eight inches or around 20 centimeters from this corner. So this is that's there. And eight inches the other way. So it could have been seven or nine or whatever. So there are no real rules for this. So that's just what I decided to settle on. So now I want to draw the shape of this quarter knee. I want to figure out something that looks nice. Okay, so this is where it should end. I would like it to be around one inch at the ends here. So that should be the thickness. But I do want to round it out over a little bit as well. So, but we'll do that later. So this is around one inch. And I want to, you know, I don't know if you remember, I can just show you. On the boat, we have a frame here. We don't want to, you know, we don't want the, um, the knee to get into contact with this frame. And this frame is one and a half inches by five eighths. So we can, just, we can just draw this one in here. So this is the transom, and this is the planking. 
And I guess, you know, just for my own sake, I'll just uh, make a note that this is the stern quarter knee. Ladybug. So this, you know, in case I want to build uh, one more of these boats at some point, I, um, I could keep these patterns, you know, as a reference. Um, okay, so this is the plan planking and this is the transom. Um, and the thickness of this was 5 eighths. So this is around here. And it was one and a half inches the other way. So we don't want to, we want to keep out of this, keep away from this area. Okay, so that's good to know. So now we want to draw some sort of nice curved shape, both here, the outside, but we also want to draw a nice curved shape somewhere around here where we won't get in touch with, you know, we'll. We want to stay away from that frame. And how do you draw a nice curved shape? Of course, you could do it by hand, some sort of, you know, trying to create a nice curve, but it's really hard to get it, it's really difficult to get it nice and fair. So, what I usually do is I use this tool. I'll just zoom out a little bit here so that you can see what it actually is. <clears throat> So here we have it. So this is a piece of polycarbonate or Lexan. So I bought it at a, a glacier, a, a window maker. And the great thing about this is that it's extremely flexible and it bends to a nice fair shape. And by fair, I mean that it's a very even shape. It bends very evenly, which is what you want in a boat. Um, so you could use a wooden batten so a thin strip of wood, um, but it won't bend as well as this when you do really extreme curves. So for this curve, I'll be using this Lexan batten. And I've made this, I've put some, drilled some holes at the end. You can see there's a hole there with some string through. There's a hole at the other end as well there. And then I've made this little metal thing with two holes in it. Sort of the th same thing that you use when you um, put up a tent for uh, tightening the, the strings on, on your tent. So it's actually the same principle. So the great thing about this one is that you can bend it and pull the string. Then you can move this little metal thingy. So I'm just bracing it against the floor like this. Oops. And then it sort of stays in the shape that you want. And you can adjust it as much as you want and you'll get a nice even curve, which is sort of like a curved ruler, right? Yeah. So I've put this little bit, little piece of blue masking tape at the end. That's the curve I used for the, for the knees I made at the other end of the boat. So I'd like to use the same curve. So that's why I've just made this as a, as a reference. So it'll be the same. Okay. So let's move down here again. Okay, so I hope you can see so what I would like to do now is to draw a nice even curve from around this one inch corner and all the way around. So I'm just placing it around here like this. And I'm just holding it in place. And then I'm drawing along the, the batten, like this. Okay, I think that, that, that looks okay. So the other knee I made earlier, 
I, I started that four inches in, I believe, from the corner, so to say. So here and here were the starting points. And I think I'll try and go for the same curve. So like this. So this would then be the shape of the knee. And as you can see, we're well clear of the, of the frame here. The thing is that once we cut a bevel here, this will actually move a little bit closer to the, to the frame. So we want a little bit of space here. So the final thing I want to do is just round off the ends. So you don't want any sharp corners in your boat. And for this, I'm using this one. So you could use just, uh, you could use just, you know, something round, some, something circular. So this is a, a French curve, I believe it's called. So it's, um, it's curves that are not constant. They're sort of changing. So they're changing their, their slope continuously, which, uh, which can look really nice on a boat. So, so I'm using this and I'm trying to make it the same at both ends. So one there, and I'm doing the same here, like this. Okay, so that'll be my knee, or at least my knee pattern. So now I want to cut this out on the bandsaw. So this will be a little bit noisy perhaps, but it should go pretty fast if if it gets too noisy, please just to turn down the sound for a while. So when I do my normal videos, I can always, you know, adjust the volume in, um, in editing, but I'm not sure it's, it's possible with this, with this live stream. So let's see, just put on some dust extraction here. All right. So that was the rough pattern. So you could um, could trim it, you know, do slight adjustments. Whoops, with a block plane. But actually, I think it's uh, it's quite okay for now. So I'll just try to uh, transfer this onto my actual stock, my actual oak that I want to use for the for the knees. Okay.
So I've planed a few pieces of wood here. Actually, this was, it looked like, you know, this morning, it looked like this. So it was this huge crook. But um, I decided I want to cut it out, you know, into some reasonable sizes for the knees and just plane them down to their final thickness so that we wouldn't have to do that during the live session because it'll just be pretty loud and pretty boring, I guess. So, and now we get to one of the great features about making patterns. So, let's have a look at this. So one of the reasons you want to create a pattern, let's see if you have a proper view here, looks okay. One of the reasons you want to use a pattern is that it will allow you to get the best possible use of your wood. Let's say this piece, for example, has a few, um, a few small nuts, nothing too serious, but it does have a few nuts. When you have a pattern, you can sometimes align it so that you'll avoid nuts or so that you'll you know, avoid cracks or any other defects and get the best grain orientation as well for your piece. You can, you can really optimize how you align, align, your, um, align your pattern on the wood um, to get the best use of it. So that's one of the great things about it. So I don't think I will avoid nuts altogether <laughs> with this piece because they're kind of all over the place. But uh, fortunately, they're not very big, so I think it'll be just fine. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Um, and again, I want the grain to follow the shape of the piece as much as possible. So perhaps we can avoid these nuts. That would actually be great and that one as well. So let's see if that would be possible. Something like this, we can just give it a try. Like this. Okay, so we have a few nuts here, a few nut nuts there, but actually we'll get We'll get around most of the big ones here. And the checks here will be gone as well. So I think this is actually, this is actually okay. So this is the shape we want to cut out. But in order to save ourselves a bit of work, so this is the transom is here. Just need to check which one is the transom and which one is the, the planking. So this is the transom, and this is the planking, like this, okay. So we want to make this cut at the correct angle, okay. Um, so what I'll be doing now is I'll be referencing, referencing the first pattern now, and I'll be using the big bevel gauge to pick up the angle. So we could start out with this one, which is the transom. And I'll just set this bevel gauge to this angle, like this. So this is the angle that we want to cut against the transom. Okay. So now I want to set the bandsaw to this angle. Okay, so let's move over to the bandsaw. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm taking my, this one all the way up, because then I have room for the, for the blade of the bevel gauge, and then I'm just, Tilting the table until I have 
the correct angle, and then I'm locking the table in place. Okay. This looks pretty good. So this is just about the angle I want to cut. The next thing I want to figure out is which way should I, should I go this way or should I go this way to get the correct angle? So I need to think a little bit. Um, I guess it can be solved by going to the boat because then it'll sort of, it should all make sense, I guess. So let's see here. Like this. So I'll just grab a pencil. Okay, so here we are. So here's the transom, here's the planking. Obviously, this is the transom, this is the planking. So the pattern should actually be like this. Okay. And the angle we'll be cutting, just wraps like this, will be this way outwards like this and it'll be outwards like this okay I hope this makes sense so I just need to make sure that I'm cutting the the bevel the correct way at the bandsaw so let's see Okay, here we are. So I want it to tilt this way, which is correct now. And I want it to tilt this way because I want this sort of angle here. Okay. So the first bevel I picked up was transom angle. So I want to start out by cutting the transom, which is here. Okay. And the angle should be tilted like that. So I'll be making my cut here and I'll just be following the, the cut line. Okay. I'll just take this fence down a little bit. And I'll just move you guys a little bit closer. So you can see what I'm doing. So here we are. And now it'll be a little bit noisy again. So I'm checking that the angle is, that I'm going the right direction to get it straight. And then I'm starting the saw. Actually, I just realized I made a mistake. So if I cut it like that, the knee will actually become too large because the pattern I've made is for the larger side of the, um, of the knee. So, and if I cut it at this angle, the back of it will become larger. So I actually have to retrace it. So. so the planking here, I'm gonna turn some over. So I want it the other way around. So the thing I did, I actually flipped this around and I shouldn't have done that. So I want it the other way around. So just to make things a little bit easier, I should probably just do the other end because then I won't have to do any erasing. But I want this side to be upwards because then this will be the larger side. Okay, so the question is whether I can avoid some of the knots. Perhaps not. So excuse the pun. <laughs> okay, so let's try this out. Just do another go like this, like this, all right, 
Here's the shape. Okay, so this is the plank king, and this is transom. And the angle I just picked up was the transom. So this is the angle I'll need to cut first. And I want it to be not like that, but sort of angles like this. All right. Let's go at it again. <laughs> Let's move on to the saw. I'll just turn on the dust extractor. This is how it's, that's the angle against the transom. Okay, so now I want to cut the angle against the planking. And I just need to pick up this angle as well from the pattern. So it's actually this is kind of in the way. <laughs> I guess I should have transferred it to the other side of the but we'll just use the small one instead. So something like this, and I can just transfer it to the big bevel gauge to make it easier to set up the saw correctly. Okay, so something like this. So this is the angle I want for the, the part that'll go against the planking. So I'll do the same thing here on the bandsaw. Just take this one up and then just readjust until I'm where I want to be, so around here. So that's the more or less correct angle. Bring down this, these guides. And then again, I need to make sure that I'm beveling it the correct way, not flipping it over. So I think this should be just about right. So I'm just cutting to the line here. So these were the two mitered cut or angle cuts, so to say. The rest of it I'll just cut square because it won't be contacting any other surfaces on the boat. Um, just try and get you a little bit closer here. Then we'll just do the final little bit of cutting here.
So, now we should be reasonably close to, to having our finished part. So there's one side that should fit against the transom, one side that should fit against the planking. But I'll just do a little bit of touching up with my block plane first. You know, these are just a little bit rough. So I'll just grab the block plane here and just smoothen things out a little bit. The block plane really is something that is used all the time in boat building. So if you just need one tool, one good quality hand tool, I would definitely go for a, a nice block plane. A lot of fun to use and it's really useful for all sorts of adjustments. We'll probably need to do some adjustments as well. But this part, I'm just smoothing this a little bit. Here again, trying to work along the grain. So even though this is a crook, it has some curve, I can still go against the grain if I'm not careful. This concave part needs to be spoke shaped so the plane won't really go in here it won't cut even if I'm skewing it so I'll just be smoothing this a little bit with a spoke shape just need, to, need to advance it just a little bit I'm trying to go along the grain at all times. I'm trying to get a nice fair shape. And we have these roundovers, which can be done with the spoke shave as well. Just trying to get them reasonably smooth. I guess this inside corner needs to be I'm just counting the number of strokes I'm doing so that the bevel will be or the chamfer will be the same all the way. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm just doing the last bit here, like this. Of course, you could do this with a, with a small trim router as well. Okay, so let's see <laughs> if it fits. The moment of truth. It probably doesn't fit perfectly, but it might be reasonably close. So, this is exciting. Uh, I just need to adjust the camera slightly so you can see. So there you have it. You're pretty close, so it'll be very um, revealing, I guess. So we wanted to fit the planking over here like this and the transom. We have a mark up here. Who just see? Oh my God. That's, <laughs> that's shockingly good. I don't know if it shows. Like that. So it looks pretty darn perfect, at least up here at the top. But I think I've overshot the bevel just slightly over here at the transom. So we just move the camera a little bit. Perhaps you can see now that there's a little bit of a gap at the lower part of the knee, so maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So it looks great from the top, but doesn't really fit underneath. So I guess we should just fix that. So how do we do that? Because we do the block plane thing. All right. 
So here I'm back at the vise. And this is actually a pretty neat little trick as well. So we were at the transom here and we want the angle to be less extreme. We want it to be a little bit flatter by around a sixteenth of an inch or one, one and a half millimeters. So I'll just draw a line here just to give me some sort of idea of how far I should go. And then I'll just cross hatch here, which will make it much easier for me and perhaps for you as well to see what I'm doing. So I'll need, I'll want to remove this pencil line, but I don't want to remove any material down here. Okay. So putting it into the vise. And then I'm starting out at the left, which is where I want to remove material. And then I'm doing a cut all the way out at the left with my block plane, like this. And I'm moving in a little bit, a little bit more, and slightly more. I don't want to touch the very edge because I don't want to remove anything from the top. Okay, I'm just ch checking my line here. I'm not all the way there, but almost. So I'll just do one more cut, one more cut, one more cut, and I'm just slightly, you know, by Removing some wood all the way out here, a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm sort of slightly changing the angle. Actually, I think this looks good. And then I'll just do a full stroke to get everything nice and flat. Okay, let's see if that did the trick. Let's go back, back to the boat. See if we can get a good angle there. Okay. So here we have the transom, here we have the planking. Let's see how it fits. Um, pretty close. Okay. So I guess that's our transom knee, fits nicely. So the next thing I'll want to do here is to make the opposite knee. And for this, I can actually use the same pattern because the angle will be, you know, the angles between the transom and the planking will be the same, or at least they should be the same. They're supposed to be the same. The only difference is that this, sorry, this bevel will need to be opposite, and this bevel, instead of going outwards, it'll need to be the other way around. So, but it should be pretty close, you know, it should be pretty much the same. So that's one of the great things. Another great thing about making patterns is the fact that you can make several identical pieces. Let's say you need to make an E at either side of the boat, then you can make the second one quite a bit faster. If you're building to, uh, an identical boat at some point, you can probably use the, the pattern as well. All right, so my clock says 79 minutes now. So that's an hour and 20 minutes. It's actually been quite a bit longer than I thought it would. So I hope it hasn't been all too boring or all too long. And I must admit, I haven't been able to answer all questions that you've been uh, writing me. Um, but I think we should probably call it a day now because otherwise it'll just uh, become too long and too boring and too late. But those of you guys who've been writing questions that I haven't been able to answer, I'll just, I'll just uh, write you an, an answer per email. So I hope that'll work out and uh, we can keep in touch that way. So. I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'd love to hear some feedback uh, <laughs> regarding this session. So it's been extremely handheld and it's been, I guess, kind of shaky. And I don't know about the image quality or the sound quality or anything. Um, yeah, what I think this session probably has shown is that, you know, just making one of these can take you an hour and 20 minutes. 
<laughs> so building a boat just takes a long time. But the thing about building boats is the fact that I think it's just a lot of fun, you know. This hour and 20 minutes has just flown away for me. So if you feel the same way, I guess, you know, building a boat would be fun for you as well. So, yeah. So if you're in a rush, you should probably not build a, build a wooden boat. But if you want to spend some time in the shop and have a good time, you know, enjoy, enjoy using your hands and working creatively with wood, it might be something for you. So I'll just see if I have any questions here just to, to finish off. Just a moment. All right, thanks. Okay. All right. So I think that's it for today. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks for joining in, and I'll talk to you soon. Write me an email if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. Bye.